Now, in the wake of repeated attacks on his country by Boko Haram, Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan says he is grateful for international assistance in uh, helping to rescue 276 kidnapped school girls. The United States, Britain, France and China are contributing assets in the search to find those girls. Speaking Thursday at the World Economic Forum in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, Mr. Jonathan thanked its participants for attending and not giving in to terrorists. Let me really especially thank all of you for accepting to come, especially this time that as a nation we are facing attack of terrorists. Let me appreciate individually and collectively for your support for us, your sentiments, and in fact, by your presence here in Nigeria at this time, you have already supported us to win the war against terror. Boko Haram is suspected of kidnapping the 276 schoolgirls last month, saying they will be sold. Families and activists are demanding the government speed up the rescue of their schoolgirls. I am praying and please asking them, please try more, try more and get these girls out. Get them out of those monsters, from these monsters and please, I'm so angry because it's just too much. It's too much for a mother to go through this. U.S. State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki says the United States is sending a team of experts, including military members, to Nigeria. Obviously, uh, uh, this is in the interest of the Nigerian government uh, to uh, accept um, every aspect of our assistance. Uh, they conveyed that they uh, were willing to do that yesterday, and uh, it continues to be in their interest to uh, be as cooperative as possible. The U.S. says it's not considering a military operation to rescue the girls. U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama and former First Lady and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton have lent their voices to the international outcry over the kidnapping of the girls. In an interview Wednesday, Clinton expressed her outrage and called for action. It's criminal, uh, it's an act of terrorism, uh, and it really merits uh, the fullest response possible, first and foremost, from the government of Nigeria. Mrs. Obama let her support be known online through social media, posting a picture of herself on Facebook and Twitter, along with a message saying her thoughts and prayers were with the girls and their families. Oscar Wynn and human rights activist Angelina Jolie voiced support for the girls and referred to their captures as part of the evil in the world. Early this week, suspected Boko Haram militants launched an attack on the northeast Nigerian market town of Gamburo near the Cameroon border and killed more than 100 people. Witnesses said a scores of gunmen surrounded the town before dawn on Monday and sprayed it with automatic gunfire, burning houses and vehicles, and in some cases, slitting people's throats. Now, for more perspective on Nigeria's fight against Islamic militants, I'm joined by Nicole Lee, the outgoing president of Trans-Africa Forum, the nation's oldest African-American uh, African policy organization dedicated to advocacy for a just U.S. foreign policy for Africa and Africans. Uh, Ms. Lee, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you so much. Now, I know you have been touched also by the situation in Nigeria. You are on the streets of Washington, D.C., uh, participating in protests against, uh, uh, I mean, for the release of the, or rescue of those girls. Uh, what inspired you to get yourself out there? Well, I've been watching the story and the situation that not just the girls being kidnapped um, in, in um, Shabak, but also watching what has been happening with Boko Haram and just the horrific attacks and how civilians have been really targeted. I think the first time I saw the hashtag you know, really early on, um, I was touched both as a foreign policy advocate, but also as a mother. I have two daughters myself, and to just think about the anguish I would be going through if something like that happened to my daughters and there was really no outcry that I didn't feel the government was doing anything, I just really felt um, that it was important for me to act, even as outgoing president of Trans-Africa. Interesting, actually, that you mentioned the hashtag, bring back our daughters. Before that, did we kind of uh, not wake up to the reality in northern Nigeria, northeastern Nigeria? 
I think the world has really you know, done a disservice, if you will, to northern Nigeria. We've been caught up in other conflicts, and we haven't realized that Boko Haram is really growing. Um, their reach has grown. Uh, their attacks have gotten more brazen and more brutal. I do think that the world now, though, has woken up to it. I think everyone has been touched, both by the situation, but also the bravery and the real heroic nature of what the families and the communities have done in Nigeria to bring this issue to light. And I think, really, the world um, is standing behind all Nigerians, and I think that that's a very good start. And uh, we have to credit social media for this, too. Now, in terms of the pressure on the U.S. to lend more assistance, do you feel that uh, the U.S. has done enough? Well, certainly U.S. officials have said that they have been offering assistance ever since the situation occurred. What I know for sure is that there have been many conversations with U.S. officials about Nigeria and this situation of conflict in Boko Haram and how women have been treated. Um, certainly um, the, the announcement to send the aid, to send the technicians, to send the forensics teams um, certainly coincides uh, the social media campaign really gaining steed, steam. And I'm, I'm proud to see the United States I think doing the right thing, stepping up. I'm glad to also see there are no troops. We're not discussing troops on the ground. I think that that would be inappropriate. But to provide the technological capabilities that the United States has, as we've done in so many other situations, I think that is both appropriate and in line with, we, with what we say are American values. You know, in the last few weeks also, the U.S. has been coming under a lot of pressure to intervene in South mm -hmm. Sudan, in the Central African Republic. Do you think sometimes the expectations are too much? Uh, or from the African continent? I think um, the idea that of American values and democracy and the things that the United States says that, that we care about, I think people oftentimes hold us to our words. We say that human rights are paramount. We say that humans are the priority and things come after. I think that that is why people turn to the United States when things like this happen and they say, what is the United States going to do? I think we definitely need to first set a trend that human rights are the priority and are paramount, um, both in our dealings at home and abroad. And I think we can do that with our words, and I think also we should do that with our actions. Tell me briefly, what do you think, uh, uh, which area would you really commend the performance of the U.S. in terms of the U.S. policy towards uh, Africa, and where do you think more needs to be done? Mm. Well, I first really commend um, the U Americans, the U.S. population, because oftentimes when we see a problem in U.S. policy, we stand up and we stand against it, and we really push our government to do the right thing. And that's what's appropriate in a democracy, that you push your government to do the right thing. We did that in the anti-apartheid movement so many years ago, and I think today that's what we're doing. Um, certainly in the fight against AIDS, that is what Americans have always done. We've looked at situations and we've said this is wrong. Now the question is, are we educated enough? And that's, of course, what I work on, making sure that Americans know what's going on around the world so we can do the right thing. Oh, great. And uh, we, we, we hope uh, more will be listening uh, to what you're saying. Thank you.